Welcome to Verbal Quick Radio. We give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. I want to take this time to possibly help save lives. And I want to do this with the tragedy of PNB Rock out of Philadelphia. Because it's a lesson in this that maybe can help save lives. Now, you have gangsters who become rappers because, you know, feel like, well, hey, man, look, I can get in this rap game. I can make the same amount of money I'm making from the streets. I can be legal, enjoy life, man. I can get out these streets, right? But then when you go into the music industry, you find out it's a whole nother animal. Now, in your mind, you thinking it's one way. But when you get down and dealing with DJs and you're dealing with the industry, it's like, man, what the hell is going on, right? But that's, but that's that world. Same with activists who want to get in the rap game, right? You're an activist. Your mindset is, man, I go where I want to go. Uh, I go to any city. I want to go because that's where my people at. And I know what the devil is doing with the music and how they trying to spread a message to destroy us as a people. And I I can understand I put my life on the line to get out and help my people, no matter where they at in any city, right? Getting the rap game, getting find out about the industry, you get to see who sold a lot, who doing what, you can't believe it. And they willing to protect their, their who they are because they want to keep their money flowing and you like want to expose them to the community saying, man, so-and-so is a fraud. But people in the community protect the fraud because they might be getting the cut. You don't know. You just saying you entering enter, entering into the game uh, from your heart chakras. You, you like, man, it's time for my people to rise up. And realize, man, it's a whole different animal, a whole different game. You got to create your uh, grassroots movement, and you got to be independent, and you got to do what you and do what you got to do, and have your people right. But then there's the rappers who become gangsters, and there's the activists who become rappers, or you got the rappers who become gangsters and you got the rappers who become activists right now the rappers who become gangsters they don't they don't know nothing about that life right but yet they understand the fans and the people and the persona make you some money so shit if I'm finna get paid acting like a gangster they like me where the money at same thing with some of the activists, they rappers, but they like, man, I can rap, but hey, man, I see a lane in this active, in it being an activist. I'm finna, you know, I don't know nothing about being an activist or the community or the heart of it. I see some money in it. I'm finna go get, get me a bag, right? And at the end of the day, everybody chasing that bag, right? So we finna get into it. Like I said, this comes from the, this comes from New York Times. And it says rapper PNB Rock is killed in rock and killed in a robbery in South Los Angeles, right? PNB Rock, a Philadelphia rapper known for his m- melodic style and songs like Fleet and Selfish, was killed on Monday afternoon and what the police said they believed was a robbery that took place after the arrest was tagged on social media at a restaurant in South Los Angeles. Check this out. The rapper was brutally attacked by an individual, right? One man. He was brutally attacked by an individual who apparently, or we believe, came to the location after social after social media posting of the artist and the woman accompanying him. Posting on Instagram a picture of the meal, Chef Michael Moore of the Los Angeles, I mean Chief. Michael Moore of the Los Angeles Police Department said on Tuesday in remarks to local reports that were posted online. Chief Moore said Mr. Allen was enjoying a simple meal with the woman and that 
at, with the woman at that location was tagged in the posting. He said the attacker entered the location, Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, in South Los Angeles, and a struggle ensued. PNB Rock was shot and killed because of the valuables that he had with him, the chief said. Let me think about now, let me think about this. If I'm one, one, right, and this is this is only to save lives, and this is nothing on PNB Rock, right? This is this is these are rules. These are these are lessons that you should adhere to. One, if I'm with a female in another neighborhood in another city, right? First thing is her protection, right? That's her protection. One, if you're taking her somewhere and it's just you and her and you finna go to somebody else's hood in another city, then you have bodyguards, armed bodyguards to ensure her safety and your safety as well. Or you take her to a place where you know the chance of violence of being robbed or something occurring is slim. Take it to a high scale, a, a high end restaurant for real, right? Because, uh, and I, I explain it in a minute. Take it to a high end restaurant, right? Two, if you have valuables on the jewelry on, you don't wear them on somebody else's, in somebody else's neighborhood. Leave that in the car, lock it up, go in there. Because one, you're saying, hey, look at me. All right. Two, you don't know how many desperate wolves are around you that see that jury and they say, damn, that's that 10,000 I need right there. He got to have at least 10,000 or more worth of jury on. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can get that. That's, that's, that's a lit. That's a come up. You know what I mean? I can, yeah, I can, I can, I can use that, right? For one. So you post it on social media. Here come somebody hungry, right? Need the money, right? A wolf, don't give a damn. Walking to see you with a female, bam. And it's on, right? Because you post that, you don't know that that person or the robber could just stay a block away, two blocks away. He can walk, it literally walk, to the location where you at because you post the location. He's coming. Now, I'll show you how ce celebrityism fools you. All right. You can say, man, I'm a celebrity. Everybody jamming my music, right? Yeah. But you got those out there that see you as a target. You're not thinking like that in your mind because... You know, you ain't, you're not from that hood. You're not a gangster from that hood. People from that hood will tell you, man, damn, dude, you gonna wear your jewelry going in there? You like, what, you know, what, what's, what's, I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? It's like, no, dude, don't, no. And, and this is going out to other artists, right? Save your life. They might don't, you know, they don't know, you don't poke, they don't, you, you, you there to have a good time with, with your lady. See, when you start making money in this society, you become a target. You got to know how to handle celebrityism. You got to be versatile. You can't do certain things at certain places. All right. Okay. So, struggle ensued. Okay. Okay. He said an investigation was taking place. That's, that's what the chief Moore was saying. Investigation is taking place. PNB Rock 
was the stage name of Rakim Allen, Atlantic Records. His label describes his death as a senseless love, which is true. PNB Rock was more than an artist, the company said in a post on Instagram Tuesday. Right? To many, Rakim Allen was a great friend. He was also a wonderful father, and he had two beautiful girls. Dude. Your life sometimes is not just for you. See, gangsters know when you got family and you walk outside your door, you always on the alert, you looking around, you checking, hey man, so and so. It ain't about pride, it's about survival. It's about coming home at the end of the night, right? The spokeswoman said a male suspect entered the restaurant and demanded the property of the 30-year-old victim. The police did not immediately identify the victim by name, but news outlets repeatedly did so. And the police chief then confirmed he was the rapper. The suspect fled after the shooting and the artist was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Tell y'all something. Tell y'all something. In certain areas, right, you're a foreigner in that area. The people in that community, they know when you walk in an establishment or you go somewhere in another city or town, especially in the hood, they know they can look and tell if you from there or not because they know they people, right? You walk up in there and you, they stay, okay, they see you as a foreigner. Even though we say, hey, man, we all black, right? That's an activist mindset. And people feel off that activist mindset because of the activist, you going there in a certain way, right? So you can go in well because you're activists. You ain't tripping, man. Because activists is out is in the streets anyway. What's up, man? So so y'all know can we you know right? it's the same thing, same game. It's just that unity, you know, and deep down, all black people want to unify. Whether they tell you or not, all black people want to unify. But it's a certain code, a certain way, a certain structure of doing it. So you in there, right? Certain things are not um, did or said or presented. So I have been places where I could tell that the, the establishment in that community, they down with that community. That's where they get their bread and butter from. That's where they get their money from. That's where they grew up. They stay hood. That's their family. They, they, they with that community. You a stranger in that community, right? If you a stranger in that community, right? You, you little, you, 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 put like this. You coming into an establishment in another community. You show love to the cook, the person at the counter. How you doing? Yes, man, what's going on? What you recommend? Yeah, I man, I like, I like what you got on the wall. I like the people. You know what I mean? I like the flavor. You know what I mean? You showing love. If you just order and sit down, you don't know the, the language of that community in that situation is what I'm saying. Okay. Let's get back to it. A number of burglaries and robberies targeting actors Musicians and athletes have occurred in the recent years. Bashir Jackson, who performed as Pop Smoke, was killed in a home invasion in early 2020. Fans noted that the day before he was shot, he had posted photos on Instagram showing a stack of cash and a gift bag label with his Los Angeles address. A little more than a week before PNB Rock was killed, he spoke about being targeted in Los Angeles and recalled the situation in which he was followed. This is PNB Rock saying, where I'm from, 
we like sneaky criminals, he said in a YouTube interview with DJ Academics. In L.A., it's like they bold. PNB Rock was part of a wave of rappers whose popularity and unique sound was partly built on their ability to effortless, effortless, effortlessly switch between singing and rapping. It's like, what do you label yourself when you still infuse rap into your songs? He told Paper Magazine in 2017, right? He said that Drake had inspired him to start a career in music and that at 19, while serving time in prison for what he described as robbing, stealing, drilling, he got hold of a keyboard. See, see you got gangsters who become rappers as a way to maintain, support themselves. You got activists who become rappers. You got rappers who become gangsters. You got rappers who become activists. But at the end of the day, everybody trying to get the bag. You dig what I'm saying? So that's what that was. He collaborated with one of hip hop's most uh, talented acts, including Lil Baby, City Girl, and Triple X to action. One of the biggest hits, Dangerous, a collaboration with Meek Mill and Jeremiah reached number 31 on the Billboard Hot 100 in late 2018. The following summer, PNB Rock appeared on Ed Sharon's Cross Me alongside Chance the Rapper. That song remained on Billboard Hot 100 for several weeks, peaking at number 25. The rapper released his latest song, Love Me Again, was on September the 17th. The rapper said he was not superstitious, but intentionally kept a low profile while in Los Angeles. Ever since my brother got killed, like my oldest brother, I've been moving different since. He said, adding that he had been he had been on alert. I don't I didn't seen people die, he said. Anybody can die. That's what PNB said in his last interview. Right. So from his interview, obviously, obviously, he knew the streets because he's like, I'm keeping a low profile. You know, I, I, I understand. So, because, and the reason why I'm going over this, because I don't want it to make it seem like, I oh, mean, it's just fate. It was his time. We're we not doing it. It's, we got to look at the whole, whole big picture, right? This is the big, big picture. This is the big picture. After slavery, black people were sent to what they call the ghetto, right? Everybody, everybody family. I don't care. Everybody, if you black in America, you started in the hood, right? On whatever generation you come from, right? Okay. Now, they did the same experiment as they did in with Hitler with the Jews and put all of them into ghettos. But I'm going to show you the difference between the black ghettos. The difference was. Here you go to where you make it a law to where black people are not allowed to read or write for 400 years. 1865, wait a minute. Uh, black people, uh, you're free. No education. No nothing. Right. Black folks trying to fight their way to the top, right? So now black people want to buy houses. They they wanna they wanna enjoy their American life. So white folks say, well, you can't buy houses in white areas, but we can. You but we sectioned off parts of town where you can come live, called the ghetto, right? Section them off. Only only you own black people only could live. In the ghetto, right? Now, this is where this comes from. From the first moment blacks was put in the ghetto, it was like, look, we're going to work and get a, be, get ourselves out of the ghetto. That's always been a thing. Why? Because white folk used it as uh, sentencing. It wasn't nothing that they were doing to benefit you. It was something that, look, I'm going to give you the Worst part of town, 
well, I'm going to set you up by chemical plants. I'm a whatever, and there you go. This is your neighborhood. But And then they, and the purpose for the police now, they said the ghetto was to, to, to keep you in. Right, it was to to to, to bound you in. You were supposed to never get out the ghetto. You this is where you are gonna stay, right? But that's okay, right? Because hey, man, we finna build these these turn these ghettos into black communities, right? But guess what happened? Here go here go the system, right? Look, that's what we gonna do? We are gonna put the worst alcohol. We are gonna have Mad Dog. We gonna have Thunderbird. We are gonna have Night Train. We gonna have all. We gonna have Mount Liquor. We gonna put all that in the. If you want that, you gotta go to the Black Community. And this is we talk. This is before, uh, you know, the, the 2022, 2015. We going back into the, the 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 early 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, 70s, and on back. Right when they this this is what was happening. Right, okay. Now. On top of the, then we're going to make sure there's a liquor store on every corner, right? We'll put a church on every corner because in their mind, the purpose of the church was is to make you um, cope with it. You know, make you, even though it's hard right now, but one day it's going to get better. You know, make you, give you hope, right, while you was in that situation. It wasn't supposed to give you solid mathematics or science to actually build. It's just where you can deal with it and, you know, ease your pain on the Sunday, where you can go and let it out, moan and groan, run up and down the aisles, you know, feel good, play the piano, you know, sing out of your pain, right? And you feel better because you let it out. But then Monday, you know, you back on the grind again. All right, so they they said this is by design. Whenever you hear people say this was by design, it was by design. So now, think about it. So down the block, right? You got a a, a, a woman single, a woman by herself, no husband, three kids. Next door to her, you got a family that that think about it. Now they coming right out of out of slavery. How did? Black people know how to become Americans other than what they uh, actually witnessed and saw. The strap, leather strap. Black folk get the belt with beating their children. Next to the house where the woman, she trying to raise her uh, family by herself. Then you got this girl growing up in a household where she got uh, pedophiles and perverts. This dude growing up in a house where the the, the post of... Uh, uh, Family member missing with him, and then this one said it in there, and everybody right there together fighting each other, trying to scratch, claw their way out, and getting over on each other. And you know what I'm saying? So, about done by design, they knew what they were doing, they set it up that way. It, that, that, that mindset was going all the way back to Willie Lynch. And so, the thing is, is okay, you try to find a way out. Now, when you find a way out, that spell that they put on you start, you know, getting off of you. You're changing. You're a little different. You're moving around, a, 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 you know, certain different, right? And and people that's, people that's have it, they sense that on you. There's some that say, well, you sold out. Uh, some that say, man, something different about you. But check this out. There's people in the community where white folks deem ghetto, right? That's there that recognize and they there to help. They they want to build the community. They want to open up businesses in the community. And they want to turn the community into an empire, into a peaceful place to live, into a paradise, right? So their fight is, look, we got to fight the free mind, got to fight the slave mind. And that's the struggle today. Those with free minds who have knowledge of self are saying, hey, look, slave mind, 
Why don't you take on this knowledge, right? Why don't you learn? I'm telling you, if you get a free mind, life will be easier. You live longer. You're going to eat better. It's going to be greater, right? You don't have to uh, be a predator against your own people. Come on, let's get together, right? It's a fight. It's a struggle. There's a struggle going on. It's almost like, uh, uh, it's like the devil trying to wrestle with the angel and he looking for a name. The slave, the, the slave mind and the free mind wrestling until the slave mind can call himself free. But they love, but the free mind love the people with the slave mind because they see them as brothers and sisters. So they go in and they wrestling with them out of love and not trying to hurt them. Right. So that's that, that's that part of the game. Right. So the lesson is, look, you can't go and you definitely can't post on social media, what you have on and where you at. That's like saying, Hey, I got on some valuables. I'm right here at this location. Here go the address. And somebody's mindset, they taking it as though, damn, he must want me to come take his valuables because ain't nobody in their right mind going to post on social media where they at wearing the valuables. Right? That's their mindset. See, so that, and and so if you ask him, hey man, why you go up there and rob that man and kill that man for his jewelry? He, and he like, well, why he posting it? Why he wearing it and posting on social media? If he didn't, didn't want me to come up here and try to take it, his mind, the the killer mindset is saying, yeah, I'm in your neighborhood. I got this jewelry on. I dare somebody to come up here and take it. That's how the killer mind. That's how he see it. But PNB Rock. His mindset could have been, nah, man, I'm just wearing my jewelry out with a lady and joining the middle of Roscoe in the black neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? You have to, you have to discern or you have to be analytical, mathematical about the situation, right? If you're going to do that, have your bodyguards, everybody... Everybody strapped up and making sure y'all get out of there if you want to do it like that. If not, you can dress down a little bit, like you, like he said, because he understand you gotta be low key, man. I, 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 I like you know being low key. I don't want to be, you know. I said that's how you gotta play. Throw your old t shirt on, man. You know what I'm saying? Some old little sneakers or jeans or whatever. You in the neighborhood? You out chilling? What's up, fam? Yes, I ain't. You know, I ain't trying to. I'm not trying to. Uh, Come here to make no statement. I'm just trying to get me some chicken and waffles, man, with my lady. You know, I mean, I'm from Philly. We heard about the famous Roscoe. We come down there and grab a bite to eat. You know what I mean? Uh, and and it's another senseless murder, man. Another sad story. It's like, you know, what can we do to get this Willie Lynch uh, off of us? Some say we under the spell of Leviathan. But I do know this for a fact, though. Time, man. Time. 2025. Time. You know, because the planet, the universe, nature is weighing the thoughts and the mindset of the people that's on the planet. And it's like, man, something is wrong with the psyche. And all races, school shootings, mass shootings, serial killer, uh, killers of your own kind and your own community, black on black crime. It's, and it's like, you know, maybe, maybe if I heat the planet up a little bit, raise the temperature, maybe they'll stop. It's still going on, right? Or maybe if I send a big flood, you know what I'm saying, and destroy some towns or whatever. Maybe they stop. You know what I mean. Maybe if I, you know, maybe if I drop the dams, 
Maybe if I burn up what's part of the earth, you know, so there's got to be something that's going to make the people mindset become one with this universe and nature of flow and the rhythm of this planet and live in harmony. That's what living in harmony means, that your mindset and your being is in flow with the rhythm of the planet. Y'all in one harmony. Y'all work together, man and nature, universe, universal law, all working together as one to create something, you know, with this beautiful dance. But now, it, it, uh, it's, it's, it's something, man. Something went wrong. But that's why they say, man, slavery in America was one of the worst atrocities ever done to man because it was so brutal that it's taken hundreds. It's not hundreds. Let me see. It's taken over a hundred years to wash it out, to get rid of it. I mean, it's still, the remnants is still hanging on today. Racism, systemic racism, supremacy, police brutality is still lingering. It's, it's, it's still hard to watch the stain of slavery out of the American fabric. Even And everybody been putting they all dying for it and to, to get this thing right. And, and it's still rearing this ugly head. I mean, you just had the Phoenix Sun head coach get checked for racism. It's like, you know, that was, man, you're going you're gonna to not allow people to read and write for 400 years. Over 400 years? Man, well, how, how sick is that? Right? Then you create all these negative stereotypes and blackface and, and then and then in order to because you gotta talk about it and deal with it up front to heal. Then you wanna pass a lot of time about woke is don't put that in the school because I don't want my children learning about what our grandparents did to black people. Don't talk about it. It's like, oh man, what what's going on? And another thing too, man. I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me, but I'm serious, man. Slavery and what black people went through is not the same as what people in the LGBT community goes through. It's not married together. Civil rights and slavery is not married together. I mean, we got to do better. That's what I'm saying. We got to do better, man. This is... It's... It's ridiculous. I'm going to tell you why it's ridiculous that I'm going to get out of here because I'm, I'm still like, it's crazy what's going on, but I'm going to tell you why it's ridiculous, right? Okay. Because you start off elementary school, right? You're hitting junior high. You're starting to learn. you just now starting to live life, but in the back of your mind, you 13 years old, Wondering if you're going to make it to C-18, 17, 21. Who should have that win on their mind in the land of the free home of brave in America? The richest country on the planet. You hoping to make it till to, to you hit 18. So you make it to 18. That's a blessing. That means you're doing something right. Keep building. Keep studying. Keep reading. Because you got to get to 21, right? You make it to 21, that means you keep reading, keep studying, keep doing the right things, right? So you can get to 30. He made it. A lot of people, P and B Rock made it to 30. Bro. A lot of people growing up in the hood across America, you across you, in the hood in USA, America, right? Don't get to see 30, right? If you go past 30 and get to 40, right, lifestyle change. You become a you become a vegan, um, 
or you stop eating pork or you because you start understanding man, health is where I gotta get my health. I gotta run out of extra, I gotta live. I wanna get to fifty. I wanna get to sixty. I wanna get to seventy, right? I wanna live, I wanna enjoy, I wanna travel, I wanna see the world, I wanna do some things with my life, right? But the hardest part is getting from junior high school to graduate to thirty, past thirty. That's a task within itself. Some people make it to 40 and 30 by default because they wind up doing 20 years locked up, right? But then again, inside, you still got to survive to get that up. You know what I mean? But the point I'm trying to make is that should be the least of your worries. So, So what do we say? Damn, man, I'm trying to make it out the neighborhood. I'm trying to make it out the hood. I'm trying to get my mom out the hood and buy her a house. I'm trying to make something of myself. I'm trying to, why? Why? I'm going to tell you why. It don't be, it don't be the, 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 the geographics of where you stay. It be you want to go somewhere where you can think to where you can plan out your life and, your, and, and hone in on your talents and skills without worrying about somebody coming robbing you, jacking you, kicking you though, killing you, or getting hit by a straight bullet. Because, and, and, and all that takes money. Because you got a vision. You It's one things you want out of life. You don't be laying in your bed and some damn fool get into it with somebody or arguing with somebody, they get to shooting, and they come through your wall and hit you, and you ain't even did nothing. So you like, man, is there a way? What can I do? You know, you trying to, you trying to actually make your mark uh, in this lifetime on this planet. You trying to hone in on your talent and skills and give something back to the world, not just, not just the blocks in your neighborhood. You trying to be give something back to the the the, the world to society. I don't know, but I do want to say, um, brother, uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, anytime someone who reaches a level to where you're known across cities and even across the world, you have to, that's hard to do, right? And you have to be wise because as a, it's, it's a life to live, man. You know, it's it's not easy. So, dude, uh, may you rest in peace, and hopefully, others can learn. And anytime somebody faces a tragedy, such as PNB Rocks or Pop Smoke or any others, that you can teach on it and show the youth that. Hey, it's another way. Let's let's do it. Let's let's go back and examine what we've been doing, and let's see if we can do it, find it a, a better way for the next generation for P and B rocks. And he lost two of his brothers. Now he gone. His daughter's uncle's not here, and their daddy not here due to senseless violence. These girls got to grow up. Damn, you know. Who gonna guide them? Who gonna teach them about men? You know how many? Look at me. You know how many black women I done met who said they don't know how to pick a man because their daddy wasn't there. They don't know how to dress or what to wear, what not to wear, because their daddy wasn't there to say, "Hey, nah, you can't go out there like that. Cover yourself up. You're a lady." Daddy wasn't there. You know how many women? So you know, you know why? Why the divorce rate is high? Because you got a lot of women who grew up with no father there. So when she get married, she she don't have an example of how to treat a man because she never had a man in the house, household. She don't know. She just don't even have an example. She she going off the strength of just that female and what her mama taught her. That's it. So... When the man said, okay, look, let's put a plan together. We want to build this. She's like, I don't need it. I do my own thing. He's like, well, how you in a 
marriage and you just thinking about yourself and what you want and and what because a man is supposed to be there for me and do what I say you do and support me and and that's it. And it's like, nah, I don't know. That's not how a relationship work. You know? Well, I ain't never seen a relationship because my daddy wasn't there. It's like, oh, God, oh, you come on. Dude, you got let these fathers be in these girls' lives. Man, stop killing black men. We got to build this thing up. But, you know, all right. Me, 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 put, let me put it like this. Either we get it right. Or the God, the universe of God, I get it right. One, one way or another, it's going to get right anyway. But it would be better if we do it on our own accord without being forced to do it. You get what I'm saying? Vro Pick Radio, we out.